This is Ingenious and they make networking products for your home all the way up to an enterprise business. Hi everyone, my name is Monty and welcome to Inside Wire. Now on this channel I have demoed a few of these kind of products which are home business solutions from Ubiquiti and the new entry being Ultralabs and now we have Ingenious. So we're going to have a look at this. I've been sent these products that you see in front of me and we're going to break them down and take a look. I have three access points and one switch. This switch is an eight port PoE with two one gig SFP ports. And we have the smallest Wi-Fi access point just here, which is a Wi-Fi 6 2x2 MIMO. It's a low profile AP, so it consumes less power and gives you the maximum speed it can. Then we have this slightly bigger box, which is Wi-Fi 5, which reaches up to 1800 megabits per second on the five gigahertz spectrum. This is the 802.11c standard. And finally, the biggest box that we have over here is a Wi-Fi 6E 4x4 MIMO model. With these ingenious products, some may like this and some may not. I found this out on previous videos. These products only work with a cloud controller. There are models in the range that you can find on their website which do have an on-premise controller, but the ones that I have in front of me are cloud only. But let's start with the IO and we'll come back to the cloud controller shortly. We'll start off with the eight port switch. So let's have a look at what comes inside the box. Inside here we have a console cable. You don't see these regularly with switches anymore, but there is one that comes with this. We have a power cable and we have some brackets and screws to make sure you're able to rack mount this. We have a quick installation guide and we have the main switch itself. So the model number of this one is ECS1112FP. As I mentioned, you've got eight gigabit ports which are PoE on the front. You have the two uplink ports if you wish to use them or the SFP ports and we have a console port just here. On the back, we have some fans to vent this and we have the power lead just here. Next, we have the Wi-Fi 5 access point. Now, straight off on the front, it says the Ingenious Cloud Wi-Fi uh, dual band and it says exactly what it is, it's an indoor access point. There's a quick start guide that's just here, which you can scan and the mobile app which we will look at to set this up very shortly. Inside we have the bracket to make sure you can mount this properly on the ceiling or wall. And here is the product itself. So we have the power light, we have two ethernets on here, 2.4 and five gigahertz, depending on what you have activated. And on the back we have LAN one and LAN two, as I mentioned. And if you don't have PoE, there's a DC in on here as well. Now it doesn't come with it, but you can purchase it additionally if you want to set this up. And here is the first low profile Wi-Fi six access point. So as I mentioned, this is the low profile one. So you can actually see that it's a lot slimmer. I'll show you against the previous model. You can see how slim that is and how much smaller it is. So this is only two by two. Again, we have the bracket in here if you want to mount this. And finally, the Wi-Fi 6E model, uh, which is the six gigahertz tri-band access point. So, so again, we have a similar sort of setup to this. This looks exactly the same, it's just a little bit bigger. So two by two, four by four, but this also has Wi-Fi 6E on it as well. If we have a look on the back here, there is only a single ethernet port, which is the PoE in. Now this does mention on here that it's five gigabits per second. So if you have a 10 gig switch uh, that can run a five gigabit PoE, then you can go ahead and get the full potential out of the pipe that you are connecting this to. So I'm now gonna go ahead and get these plugged into the switch and I'm gonna get it plugged into my existing network. Unfortunately, I didn't have a gateway sent to me, so I'm not able to demo the full setup, but for this example just here, I'm gonna plug it into my existing network so we can get it onto the cloud and get it connected to the internet. The good thing is with this, it can all be set up on the mobile app. There is a web interface as well, which we'll have a brief look at shortly, but the majority of this is going to be done on the app itself. So we go ahead and open this up. You'll be asked to sign in and set up. So we'll go ahead and do that. And you can see straight away, we have one managed network. So in here, we're going to go ahead and add your ingenious devices. So we go to register device and we need to scan the QR code on the back of the device. So we'll do the switch first. And there you go, that comes up with the device information just there. So we've gone ahead and scanned that. So we click register. <coughs> and you can name the device, so we'll just call it switch. It's saying, do you want to assign it to a network site now? But we'll click yes and we'll click next. And then it's going to say connect it to your router or switch. And then you go ahead and click finish. So we have one switch there and we go ahead and add some APs now. So let's register some more devices. So I'm gonna quickly go ahead and do these three access points. So you can see right there now on the front screen, we have an inventory of four and that device has just come online. We have 
one switch and three access points. So let's take a look at what else you can do within this app. So here is the overview. Now, if you have multiple organizations, it will pop up just here on the bottom, but I only have a single one, which is inside wire. And if we jump into it, you can see straight away the visual. So it shows you everything that's online, the APs that are online, the CPU. It looks like there was an issue detected with a high CPU. It did detect a high CPU usage. Uh, not quite sure why that is because it's been sat fairly idle at the moment unless there is something going through it that I'm not aware of. Uh, we don't have any clients online at the moment because we haven't set up the SSID or actually joined this network so we don't have anything here. Down here we see some information which will show you some top 10 clients and what the data they've been using. You can then scroll across and you can see the top 10 applications. You can see access points the ingenious Wi-Fi, which one of the SSIDs which are most used, the top OSs, and the top 10 clients. So we're back to the beginning again. Uh, we then go down here and we have devices. So we don't have any gateways, as I mentioned. We have a switch and we have the three APs. On the right hand side, you can see how long they've been online and also the channels they are using for their Wi-Fi SSID. Now these are configurable if you go into them, which is just down here where you can go ahead and play around with the radio signals to get the best out of these. Next, we have the Wi-Fi, which is the ingenious Wi-Fi, which is automatically created and it's showing 2.4, 5 and 6 gigahertz that it's uh, broadcasting in. Uh, it is an open network at the moment. I do advise you don't leave it open, but you can go ahead and change the security type from open to WPA2 to WPA3 or WPA3 mixed. So we don't have WPA2 enterprise or three enterprise on this setting right here. So in security type, you can go ahead and choose between all the different options on here. I do recommend you do put a password and never leave your Wi-Fi's open. You can choose the radio frequencies that you want it to broadcast on. And then we move into the advanced settings as well, where you can turn on VLAN, the MDNS settings and band steering also as well. We have bandwidth limitations. So if you want to limit a certain SSID network, you can do that. We have the captive portal for your guests so you can redirect them to a certain page. We also have a splash page if you want them to visit that. And we have the Wi-Fi schedule so if you want it on and off at certain times of the day, you can go ahead and do that. Finally, we have the logs in here as well. So any device events, system events and config log. Uh, we don't have anything in here because obviously we've just booted these up. But what I'm going to actually do is go ahead and join this Wi-Fi network. And you can see there, ingenious Wi-Fi. So I've joined my phone to the network and you can see now we have a client that's appeared. If I go back to the stats quickly, you can start seeing the throughput of the access point and you can drill that down for all the SSIDs or per SSID and day, week and month. You also see the devices, as I was mentioning, what the apps are, so you can see all the, the details that are going out and what Wi-Fi access points are being used. So you can see in terms of the visual what sort of information is there. Now, if I go to clients, you can see the device itself, which is on here, it's showing you the OS, where it was a minute ago, whether you wanna kick it off. And if you wanna set up an access policy for them, you can do that as well. There are some pro features available on this app itself, but you have to buy some licenses for. I'll cover that very shortly. But I have just scratched the surface with what you can do with Ingenious. Now, there is a lot more you can do, which takes it all the way, as I mentioned, from a home consumer unit all the way up to enterprise. But you can see right here how easy it is to set up these access points and just to get going out of the box. So I'm currently joined to the Wi-Fi 5 model and is the settings default that are out of the box. So I haven't made any changes. I'm just gonna go ahead and run a speed test on here. Uh, now this is double hopping because it's going through my existing network as well. So I'm not expecting it to be as quick, but generally I get about seven to 800 megabits per second down and around 60 to 80 megabits per second upload speed. So you can see right there, that's 500 down and I'm getting 40, 45. And I'm getting around about 60, there you go, going up to 70 megabits per second in terms of the upload speed. So even with the default settings, it is fairly quick. I've switched off two access points, which are these two just here, and I've left the Wi-Fi 6E one. Now, I don't have a Wi-Fi 6E device, so I'm gonna go ahead and run another speed test with just this device on. I'm sure with three access points on very close together, it was causing some issues with my speed test. So let's just see, so let's just see if we can get any better speeds out of it at the moment. So let's open up the speed test. Let's click go. So the ping is already better. That went from 23 milliseconds all the way up to 17 milliseconds. 
and you can see the download speed is, is going up to about 700 megabits per second and the upload again 50 55 megabits per second which is about right for my speed and it's going to prove me wrong by going all the way up to 70 so the upload speed is around 70 which is relatively decent so before we jump into the web interface let's quickly have a look at the cloud features and as i mentioned it comes with the basic plan uh, there's no cost to this there's no license at all um, but the professional plan does require a license. In terms of costing, it varies from device and the number of years, but you can go ahead and look that up if you want to know what the cost is. The pro licenses are generally targeted for the business and the medium businesses or higher, and you can see that by some of the uh, information that it gives you. So in terms of the team members, the cloud radius and vouchers, um, and then like I said, it's per device. So we look at the access points. This gives you three days worth of data as opposed to 30. And with the switch, again, it's three days instead of 30. And the topology only shows ingenious devices. But for the licensing, it does show third party uh, devices also as well. And it does have some more information in here that you may need to troubleshoot your network. In terms of the SD-WAN, you also have, again, the data up to 30 days, along with some other information that you may require as well. And I'll pop a link down to this in the description below as well. So as I mentioned, these are different types of uh, licenses that you can purchase. So this is what the web interface looks like. And you can see right here, we have, like I said, no gateway, but we have the switch and the access points and the clients. And you can see the network spectrums that they're connected on and how many are online at the same time. You get a bit more of a visual in terms of the graph. You can drill down a little bit further into this. And again, as I mentioned, you've got the traffic, top clients and SSID, and you can look at a lot more in there as well. You can see down here. So generally the web interface is the same and you can then drill down into the individual items. Uh, you have the IP address and you have the internal IP as well that you can connect to. So if I go down to our settings at the bottom, you can see that we have the basic uh, licensing or if you require pro licensing, you can go ahead and purchase those and add them in. And when you register devices, you have to add them in here for them to be able to be added into the ingenious system. If you ever want to remove them or deregister them, you have to make sure you do that from here. If you ever want to sell or get rid of your items, you will need to deregister the device so then they can be used by someone else. As I mentioned, there is a lot more in this web interface that you can look at. This could be actually a video in itself, but I wanted to give you a quick idea and a quick look through the web interface to see what it looks like. So you have all the settings on the side that you can scroll through. You have all your management options and then your configuration options. And then we scroll down into all your logs that you may have that you need to look at. And then I'm not an MSP license, so we don't have a license for this either. Down here we have some tasks so if you want to create some tasks you can do that and it will send them an email as to what needs to be done and then you have your own account uh, which is set up on here so you can set up additional admins and people to monitor it and for people to manage your network too and finally you have the organization itself so we have the inventory and licenses the security privacy and a backup and restore is also a pro feature as well i hope you found this video useful let me know your thoughts down in the comments below what you think of ingenious do you think they're ready to take over the market are they going to be better than ubiquity or even take on ultra labs as well for now this is inside wire and i'll see you in the next one